Hi friends, welcome back to story time. I'm so glad you can join us today. So today we're gonna read a story about chocolate chip cookies and how they were made. Last Friday was chocolate chip day. So I thought it would be really cool to read a story about chocolate chip cookies and who doesn't love chocolate chip cookies? I know I do. So let's dive into this story and see how chocolate chip cookies were made. Our story today is how the cookie crumbled, the true and not so true stories of the invention of the chocolate chip cookie by Gilbert Ford. How the cookie crumbled. Do these look familiar? Ever wonder where these round, crispy, chocolatey pieces of perfection came from? Everyone agrees that the chocolate chip cookie was invented by Ruth Wakefield. But how did she do it? That's where the story gets messy. I'm here to show you some ways it could have been, it could have happened. So sit back, grab a cookie, and let me sweep up the crumbs. Let's see how the chocolate chip cookie was made. Yum, yum. This is Ruth. Let's see. Ever since, since Ruth was old enough to hold a spoon, she was helping out her grandma in the kitchen. She'd carefully pour the scalding cheese into, the, into a rum tum titty and measure with precision the flour in her applesauce cake. Applesauce cakes? Have you ever heard of applesauce cakes? I've never heard of it, but it sounds delicious. Let's see what happens. You see, to Ruth, cooking was a science, and the kitchen was her lab. So no one was surprised when Ruth went off to college to study nutrition. So there's Ruth as a kid. She's cooking with her grandma, and that's her as an adult in college. She's studying nutrition, and nutrition is the study of how food impacts our body. After she finished school, Ruth went on to teach cooking in high school. Although she enjoyed leading her classes, she hungered for something more. So she, she's a teacher. She's teaching her students how to cook and what ingredients to use. Then Ruth met Kenneth Wakefield who shared her passion for cooking. He quickly became the apple of her eye. That means she loved him a lot. And it wasn't long before they were married and cooking up a plan to run their own restaurant. So that's Kenneth. That's her soon to be husband. Look, they're getting married. But their plan didn't fall into place until four years later. It was 1930, the beginning of the Great Depression, and with a young son in tow, it was not an ideal time to open a restaurant. But when our lovebirds found an old toll house in Whitman, Massachusetts, they knew it was now or never. So you see here, they found a toll house, it looks like it's got some patches on it. It's got some boards on the windows, but they're gonna fix it up and make it into something new. Now, I want you guys to remember the name Toll House because that's gonna be important on about how chocolate cake cookies were made. Ruth and Kenneth scraped up their savings signed on the dotted line, and fixed the place up, naming it the Toll House Inn. So that was the name of their new home and restaurant, the Toll House Inn. Ruth didn't let hard times stop her from opening her restaurant. She ran a tight ship, planning the menu and doing most of the cooking herself, while Kenneth ordered food and helped out in the kitchen. So see, here's the house. Remember, it was all busted and broken, but now it's all brand new. And then that's her, that's the inside. That's her kitchen with all her stoves and her food. That's her talking on the phone or zipping past. 
She's doing a lot of things. Ruth Staff said she was one tough cookie to work for. She demanded that the servers set the table flawlessly. She, and she even measured the distance between the fork and the plate for accuracy. So that means it has to be specific, very perfect. As dinner began to trickle into the toll house, diners began to trickle into the toll house inn, Ruth's hard work sure paid off. She sent her customers home with full stomachs and a craving to come back for more. So that's the boss, that's Ruth. She's making sure everything is perfect so that her customers will be happy and wanna come back. Now, here's the part where Ruth invents the chocolate chip cookie. The trouble is no one can agree on how she did it. Here are three ways the story has been told. So let's see, how could she have made the chocolate chip cookie? We're gonna have to decide after. The disaster. This is way one. Did she just create them by a disaster? Let's see. As one tale goes, it all began when Ruth was whipping up a batch of butter drop dough cookies. Her mixer was spinning the dough like a tornado, super fast, and it knocked the Nestle bar, chocolate bar, off the shelf. The chocolate fell right into the mix, and wow, what a disaster. But the, girl, the grill man suggested that Ruth bake the cookies anyway. Ruth gave it a try, and when she pulled those cookies from the oven, she discovered pure heaven. You see her, her mixer's going super fast like a tornado, and it was so fast that it vibrated the chocolate right into the batter. That was an accident, right? So that was a disaster while well, she thought but it came out to be yummy. All right, here's option two of how chocolate chip cookies could have been made. The substitute. Ruth was in a hurry. Our talented chef had got, forgotten to order cho baking chocolate. So she improvised by taking an ice prick to the nestle chocolate bar. She thought that by sprinkling the chunks into the dough, the chocolate would melt evenly. So see, she's taking an ice brick and she's going brick, 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 brick. And chocolate is, she's making chocolate pieces all over. Let's see. But when she pulled the cookies from the oven, boy, was she wrong. They're ruined, she cried. Of course, someone else in the kitchen took a bike and, bite and said, Mmm. So can we all pretend to take a bite of this cookie? Mmm, delicious. When Ruth decided to try one herself, she agreed. So see, this is option two that she just tried to make chocolate cookies and end up with chocolate chip cookies. The Third option, the mastermind. While returning from a trip to Egypt, Ruth was pondering an old cookie recipe when inspiration struck her. Ruth got back to her kitchen and went straight to work, mixing up the dough. So she's on her trip on her camel and she's thinking about cookies. What? all the inspiration of camels being all over the cookies like chocolate chips. Then she deliberately took an ice brick, an ice pick to the chocolate bar. Ruth dropped the chunks into the mix. Plop, plop, plop. After the timer dinged, Ruth pulled the cookies from the oven and looked at her invention. It was exactly how she imagined. She shut her eyes, took a bite, and savored the warm, gooey chocolate as it melted right in her mouth. So which version do you believe? Do you think it's the disaster or the substitute or the mastermind? Let's take a look at what the possibilities are. So for the disaster, 
Although it is possible that the candy bar fell him straight into the dough, this tale seems a little half-baked. It's missing some important parts, right? Or the substitute. Do you think that Ruth, who went to school and studied nutrition, didn't know how semi-sweet chocolate would melt when she cooked it? That's a little hard to swallow. But here's some food for thought. What about the mastermind? Isn't it possible that Ruth actually knew what she was doing? Anyone who knew Ruth would tell you she had a reputation for inventing delicious desserts at the Toll House Inn, and she traveled far and wide to find new recipes. If you ask me, Ruth deserves some credit. She was one smart cookie. Now, let's get back to the story. So which one do you think it is? Well, I think you might be right. Ruth placed the cookies on a platter, took a deep breath, and held them high. Then she marched into the dining room and presented her dessert to the customers. The diners pushed back their plates and reached for a cookie. Let's see, do you think they're gonna like it? I think they might. The cookies were a hit. Crunch, 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 crunch. Everybody loved them. They're all so happy to have these cookies. Word spread about Ruth's Toll House chocolate crunch cookies, and folks drove from miles around to try one. So Ruth added more tables and expanded her restaurant. So she got more business from her cookies. People begged Ruth for her recipe, and she didn't mind sharing it one bit. She even sent it to the newspaper. Soon, everybody in Boston was baking Toll House chocolate crunch cookies. But it wasn't until Ruth was interviewed on the Betty Crocker radio show that word really spread. Now, bakers all across the nation were talking about Ruth's cookies. See, everybody's listening to the radio and they're baking cookies with her. And they're following her recipe. Meanwhile, the managers at the Nestle, Nestle headquarters scratched their heads at the spike in sales in their candy bars when they discovered that the cause was Ruth's chocolate crunch cookies. They begged her for the recipe. Ruth gave it to them, and Nestle began to produce chocolate chips designed specifically for Ruth's cookies. So that's where we get Toll House, Nestle Toll House chocolate chips. So these are these are a bag of chocolate chips, specifically made for chocolate chip cookies. And they were created because Ruth made such an impact on the Nestle Toll Nestle production that they decided to name the chocolate chips after her her restaurant. Isn't that super cool? So sometimes when you try something new and you invent something new, it might become a real big hit and it gets really popular. So what about Ruth? What happened to her? Legend has it that she was awarded a lifetime supply of Nestle chocolate. By the 1940s, every grocery store in America carried the Toll House cookie recipe on each bag of the Nestle chocolate chip. So on the back of your Nestle chocolate chip, you can find a recipe up here for Ruth's chocolate chip cookies. So now everybody can enjoy chocolate chip cookies like Ruth. From kitchen to kitchen across the country, cookies were baking. After a long day in her kitchen, Ruth was able to sit and enjoy her sweet taste of success in all of its crunchy, gooey chocolate perfection. The end. And that, my friends, is how the cookie crumbles. 
Well, thank you so much for tuning in to our story time. I am so glad you guys were able to take part in this story about chocolate chip cookies. So until next time, bye friends. <laughs>